Welcome! In this video, I'm going to tell you about the seven resources of reality, a concept that I created myself and that you can use to improve your life and gain a better understanding. So, the first thing we need to understand is what does reality mean? So, when I look at the word reality, I think of this life that we are living. And the way that I understand it is with the framework of games. Because if you think about it, games, they have different sets of rules that apply to them. So for example, there are some games where you have a limited amount of time where you have to get as many points as possible before the timer runs out, and once the timer runs out, the game finishes, it's over. So, that's the reality of some games. And in these games, it could be one minute or one hour, where you have different teams that have to fight against each other. And that's a reality that you can have inside a game. But for our reality, the life that we live here on Earth as human beings, we're still constrained by some rules, but the, the rules are different from the rules in other games. So we also have a limited amount of time here before we die, which then means practically game over, but that's essentially reality. There are lots of rules in the reality that we live in. So some rules are physics, so, we are constrained by the laws of physics, which define how we can move. So, if I wanted to fly right now, I can't because gravity is pulling me down. But if I was in a different reality, like in a game of a game where the main character can fly, so like Minecraft. So, if I was in the reality of Minecraft in creative mode, I would be able to fly, double space and hold, and I would be flying right now. But sadly, we're not able to do this as humans because of gravity, because we are applied by a different set of rules than the games. So here we can also write rules of our reality, like that. So physics is one of the rules, and physics involves everything from the atoms to motion to energy, so lots of things there. And you also have biology, and you can also add chemistry, the three big science academic disciplines. Our rules of our reality, it can be physics, biology, and chemistry, but there are also others. So the rules are essentially guidelines of how our game works, and another important academic discipline that can give us uh, rules of how our reality works, it would be law. It's essentially rules, you can define rules as guidelines or laws that human behavior has to follow. So they define human behavior. These are the big four that I'm able to think of right now, but there are probably more that I'm not able to think of right now. So that's reality. Now, the next thing we should think about before I get into the seven resources of reality are resources. And to give you an example of most of resources that we're quite familiar with, they are the big three, which are time, money, and energy. So these are the big three that we're quite familiar with, and it turns out that these resources are also used in the games that we play, where as you do a certain actions or get certain rewards, you get money, or you get more time, or your energy and, or stamina is running low, so you need to get more. So these are essentially resources that can be used to perform actions or any type of human behavior. So, it's what resources are. Resources are something that, that you can trade in exchange for another resource. If we go to the um, 
seven resources of reality, which I came up with, we can just add seven here. And this marker is already running low. I should buy my own markers. <laughs> so the seven resources of reality. So they essentially build on top of these three. And the other resources that I add to it are space, matter, knowledge, and human relationships. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are the seven resources of reality. Essentially the seven things that we can trade in exchange for the other ones. And if we look at what motivates human beings to do the actions that they do, we can go back to a concept that I covered in the previous videos and they essentially go through Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Now you have the pyramid there and essentially if you look at the bottom most one right here, it's the physiological needs. So that's water, food, shelter. Then you go to the safety needs which are security, employment and so forth. Then you go to the uh, steam needs which are friends, uh, relationships and uh, love, affection. And then you get to the um, self-esteem needs which are status, recognition and position. And then you go to the topmost one which is self-actualization, achieving your full potential and everything you're capable of becoming. So to manage all of these needs, human beings essentially need to utilize the seven resources that they have and they can trade some resources for other ones. If we look at an example of these two resources here, time and energy, not time and energy, time and money, they're all interconnected. So if we look at the relationship between time and money, we see that human beings can trade their time in exchange for money. That means working at a job where you are using your hours in exchange for money that a company pays you and you also need energy to do this. So essentially you can add energy here as well because you need energy to be able to work at a computer, to be able to transport something, whatever job you might have, you need energy. Because if you don't sleep or you don't have energy, then you're not able to do the tasks that you can then get for money. You can also do the relationship vice versa. If you have money but you don't want to use time or energy doing a task, you can give money to another person so they can do the task for you instead. Especially for us living in the 21st century because it gives us the freedom to not need to grow our own food or work at a farm in order to get food to survive. Because 300 years backwards, before the Industrial Revolution, most humans had to spend most of their lives on the farm working and to get food. And if you try doing that yourself, it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy every day preparing the land, then planting the seeds, then growing the animals and so forth. But today, because of this magical invention called money, someone can do that hard work for us and we just need to take some of our money, give it to them and they give us the food that we need to survive. And that brings us to the other relationship, which is money and matter. This one here, money and matter. So matter, I define matter as anything that has atoms that have mass. So this is matter, food is matter, technology is matter, so everything goes under matter. And you can essentially use money to trade for matter, as in the example that we talked about before, me giving money to a farmer or the grocery store and they giving me food or water that I need to survive in and satisfy the need of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So money can also be used with energy, as, said, as I said before this relationship here. Energy, it can save you from doing manual labor, but you can also uh, define energy as oil, gas, 
or nuclear energy or electricity that we have and you can also trade money for those for example where i'm living in my apartment every single month i pay for uh, the electricity bill so i'm able to use electricity to charge my laptop and charge my phone so that's how you can use money in between this money can also be used to get space so space is essentially just a container or somewhere that you're able to place matter so where i'm standing in this classroom the space is the classroom and i can place the pen here i can place my laptop i can place people here i can place desks so it's essentially a container or an area where i can use to perform any activities that i might desire and space can also be land so it can also be apartments or houses and you can use money to trade for them or in the other way around you can use space and the matter in exchange for money which you then can use to save time and energy or whichever of these resources you want to have and now we get to knowledge and this one is quite interesting so the relationship between knowledge and money and human relationships so it's quite interesting this one let's start with knowledge and money a very typical example is when high school students go to university instead of directly starting to work why do they go to university they go to university so they can acquire knowledge and skills that they can then use to get a higher paid job so they receive more money i would argue that there's a correlation between the amount of knowledge you have and the amount of money you earn up to a point then it stops and i would say that that knowledge and the skills they are in the normal normal types of jobs and normal industries so from working at a clerk at a grocery store to working as an engineer or as a doctor or as a lawyer in society so if you create um, a line between those and with money you see that it's a linear relationship between the amount of money that you earn for the job that you have but then at that point when you start going to business then it's different then instead of being knowledge it's human relationships human relationships and money the relationship is also linear like the one with knowledge and money if you have the clerk job or construction worker and then an engineer lawyer or doctor as the highest point but then when you go to business it's the amount of human relationships that you have the amount of people you know or the amount of customers you have and the amount of money that you earn so business is much more risky than a normal job so it's having a job or running a business you can then essentially the big the big difference is this one between employee and employer employer but what i mean more is salesman salesman so both of these ones have their pros and cons as an employee you have a secure job and a steady income that's coming in every month so low risk while as an employer or salesman you're dependent on the customers that you have in order to sell your product the number of sales that you're able to get to then generate revenue for you so it's more risky but the reward is also much bigger because if you have a good product that people want let's say it costs five dollars and you're able to sell it to 10 people and it takes you one hour then you just made fifty dollars in an hour but if you're able to sell it to 100 people you just made five hundred dollars a thousand people five thousand dollars ten thousand people fifty thousand dollars and you are not constrained by the amount of time that you have so as an employee you are constrained by the amount of hours that you can work at in your job while as an employer or as a salesman you're only constrained by the amount of sales that you're able to have and being a salesman it's a very it, it has a very bad reputation because we usually associate bad salesmen that are trying to sell us products that we don't need and trick us or convince us to losing our money that's what we usually associate with our salesmen but salesmen can also be some uh, the person at the um, cash register or in the ikea store 
helping us finding the product that we want to buy. Then we want the product and they give it to us. So they're still a salesman, but the relationship is better than as a salesman that's trying to trick us or taking our money. So that's the relationships. The more human relationships you're able to have, the more money you're able to earn if you're a salesman or employer. With the knowledge, it can also give you more understanding about all of these ones. So knowledge, it can tell you how you can get more human relationships. Because let's say that you learn about jazz or music or dance, something like that. And you then go to activities about those topics, you're able to communicate and make friends with people because you have shared interests. So the knowledge can help you in acquiring more friends and human relationships or customers. And the more knowledge you have, you can learn that sales is a good way if you want to make a lot of money. So knowledge can also improve your money. It can also help you in understanding space and matter that you can acquire and then wait a little time and then it costs more and then you sell it at a profit, which many people do in the real estate business industry. They find cities that are starting to get very good populated and it just has to be a capital of a country with a growing industry. You buy an apartment there, let's say for $10,000, and then you just wait one or two years for the industry to grow so the population is higher, there's more demand for the apartment there, so the price is much higher. You can charge more for the rent of the people staying there, or you can suddenly sell the, the apartment for $20,000 after inflation, so you get uh, $10,000 in profit. So that's how you use knowledge about space and matter to improve the resources. So you can also learn about how you can use technology like a computer to write notes or a bicycle to go to work instead of walking or running and it saves you energy and also time. So knowledge, what it essentially does it gives you an understanding of the rules of the game called reality that we're living in right now. It's quite important, but let me write it down here. So it's knowledge. So knowledge allows you to understand reality. If you're able to acquire the knowledge to understand reality, and this knowledge can be everything from physics, biology, chemistry, to law, economics, business, whatever you're interested in, then you're able to do the necessary actions and behavior to improve your other resources. And to satisfy Maslow's hierarchy of needs, to satisfy the most bottom needs, you need money in order to save your time and energy so you don't perform the labor to grow your own food or create your own house, doing everything from scratch. Use money to save your time and energy so you satisfy those needs as well also for the rent and for a house, then with human relationships, you treat your friends well and you have good relationships with them that allows you to satisfy the esteem needs that you have. The energy one, it can also help you in regards to your physical health and your body. The other needs, self-actualization, you need to use all of these ones to fulfill it. So if you're able to acquire the knowledge about each of the ones that you're trying to improve, and you can acquire knowledge by watching this video, but also by reading books, then you're able to know which trades that you can make to improve each of these resources that you have. Because you also need time and energy for human relationships. You need the energy to get there to meet the person, you need the time to talk to the person or reply to their messages. So it's essentially a trade that you're making. And afterwards, with a friend or a business partner, you make a deal together, then you suddenly make the trades of money with the human relationships that allows you to make the deal with money, you trade money, for example, matter space, where each of the persons benefit from the trade. 
that's the best part about business. So it's essentially a trade. It's essentially business, everything. Because if you're trading something, you're in business. If you're trading your time for money, that's business. It's a transaction, trade. Going throughout life, you have to understand business and which trades that you make, which trades and transactions benefit you the most towards your overall goal of satisfying Maslow's hierarchy of needs as much as possible. So you survive, you feel happy because you survive, that's the way humans are programmed, and you continuously evolve and become better as a person. That's the framework that I created. I hope you're able to gain more understanding of how you can apply each of these to your life in order to improve it.